Aunt suspect foul play in man's death mystery surrounding the death of a 21-year-old min window maker Lawrence Walters whose body was found hanging from a tree in Crooks River Clarendon at about 9 a.m. on Wednesday according to the aunt who lives in the community she got a call about 4 a.m. on Wednesday morning saying that her nephew had not returned home. Walters was last seen at home on Tuesday with a friend roasting corn when he got a message about 9 p.m. and said that he had to go on the road. The friend reportedly went to feed the pigs the following morning when he noticed that red shirt Walters had been wearing. Closer inspections revealed his body hanging from a grapefruit tree the hand who viewed the body shortly after it was discovered told the news that it was hard to believe that walters committed a act of such manner as the feet were bleeding and she noticed other signs that raised her suspicion the police is currently suspecting Walters that to be a case of him taking out himself. Walters was the boyfriend of an 18-year-old, Theresia Gregory, who was reported missing on December the 20 after she was last seen about 6.30 p.m. that same day. She had not been seen or heard from since. Walters was initially taken into custody and was interviewed by the police he however denied knowledge of her whereabouts the investigation is still ongoing his heart described him as a someone who was loving caring and would never touch a fly some of you as i'm a sub just leave your thoughts down below in our comment section. Make we know how to think on that one. If you feel like a him take out himself, or a friend do it, or a somebody else do it. Businessman charged with son's death wants plea deal. A St. Andrew businessman who was reportedly captured on a video putting some corn in his son at the family business place in Papi in St. Andrew in April is planning to seek a plea deal come January next year. Dalton Knight was arrested in April after reportedly pull a firearm and can up his 38-year-old son, Roal, in the chest. The 64-year-old accused who has been in custody since his son's death was last Monday denied bail in the home circuit court and a mention date set for September of next year. No, of September 2023, that's the other year. But Knight's lawyer, Peter Champigny, told the news yesterday that he will be seeking the matter brought before the court in early January to find out whether the prosecution would be mined consider a plea deal bargain arrangement additionally the lawyer said that he will be renewing knight's bail application in january in light of certain new developments knight who has been unable to secure bail was denied by the judge on last occasion and the account of the strength of the prosecution case which includes the video recordings of the incident and the witness statements. The accused is facing charges of death and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition arising from the incident. According to the police reports about 9.45 a.m. on April the 12th, Knight, who is a licensed firearm holder, had a dispute with his son at their place of business. 
They win the dispute, Knight reportedly pulled his weapon and fired some corn into the chest of the last. The injured man was rushed to the hospital where he later died while undergoing treatment. The accused is also being represented by lawyer Pierre Rogers. So this one man have around three lawyer upon him case. The same brother here man who did a reboot in April who take out him son over a little dispute or we get to understand say it was a female who like half the son and him couldn't manage the situation and jump to react and take out him own a son. A whole heap of controversy circling around that situation. So, you know, I got to get some more update on it because we are 2023 before him return back to court. You a student who went missing now resting in hospital. Clifton, Anova, Vernon, Evans was yesterday still breathing signs of relief at her daughter, 27 year old University of the West Indies students. Chevine Evans was found alive despite being hospitalized. She is not back to normal, but we glad we find her, the relative mother told the news during a brief telephone conversation. Evans shared that when she visited her daughter at the Cornwall Regional hospital she was asleep i did not get to see her because she was asleep i just ran in and ran out back said the mother meanwhile the police have revealed that the 27 year old was not raped she is still resting in hospital there is nothing alarming that was discovered by the doctor like she was raped or anything no such thing but they are keeping her for further observation. A senior police officer told the news, Evans, who went missing in the community of Orchard in Anova on Christmas Day, was found Wednesday about 3.22 p.m. on Orchard Beach in Opel. The beach is located a giant to the northern coastal highway. The community from which she went missing is located on the other side of the road she was reportedly visiting her child's father in orchard when she ran from the house her child's father neville baby humphrey told the news that she was depressed superintendent sharon b put told the news that the police were not able to say if the young woman lost neither could they speak to the circumstances that led her to the beach? She's not in the state as yet where she can explain what happened to her and what went wrong. We just want to know that she recuperates, recuperates, gets back on her feet, her energy, and she is alive and well. The would stated shortly after Evans was found. Meanwhile, when the news visited the community of Clifton, a still visible relief, Chashana Jackson, who was involved in Wednesday's search, recount the moment she was found. I don't know it, if it is my voice she heard, but I was so happy when I saw her heading to me along the beach, Jackson told the news. I just hugged her and started to cry. Good sign of relief that she is finally home. Curfew imposed in section of Central Kingston. Mere hours after the 10-year-old Jazeera Tyrell was scorned up at her home on Flea Street in Kingston, the police have imposed a 48-hour curfew in the Kingston Central Division. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Thursday, December the 30th. The boundaries of the curfew are as follows. North along North Street, from the intersection of Anova Street to the intersection of Tex Lane. East along Tex Lane, from the intersection of North Street to the intersection of East Queen Street. Along East Queen Street, from the intersection with Tex Lane to the intersection with Anova Street. Along Anova Street, from the intersection with Queen Street to the intersection of North Street. Police said during the curfew hours, all persons within the boundaries are required 
to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized in written by the ground commander. Jaira's death comes a little over three weeks after Timara McCollum VI was also shot while at a premises on Tex Lane where a man was toying with an illegal firearm that reportedly went off and hit her. There have also been reports of another shooting in Kingston Central in recent days. Cops issue warning again about illegal guns salute. Nagahead fire victims want out of the area. Members of three families who were victims of Monday night fire that destroyed their homes in Nagahead, Portmore, St. Catherine say they will not rebuild there due to ongoing violence. The fire was allegedly started by arsonists. A fourth house that was unoccupied at the time was also set on fire early Thursday morning in what residents believe was a reprisal. Senior Deputy Divisional Superintendent Joshua Davis from the St. Catherine Fire Brigade said the damage from Monday's fire was estimated at around 17 million, while the cause of the damage on Thursday blaze that destroyed a three bedroom wooden structure was put at 5 million. We are very fearful that even if we rebuild our houses there, they will strike again. I really don't want to live in this area anymore said Cooley, a dressmaker who has been living in the community for 35 years. Right now I don't know how I am going to cope with this loss, but I am trusting in God. I don't have anywhere to live, but my church family has given me comfort. Gregory Samuel, who has lost five bedroom board house and a grocery shop, even more empathic about living. I don't want to live here anymore. I can't take the violence. The persons who are involved in the violence can move out as they wish before anything starts and leave us trapped. She said, Theresia, a nurse, said she almost lost her two-year-old son in the morning blaze. It was after the fire started and I didn't see him that I started to shout out, where is my baby? Then I remembered he's asleep on the bed with the cloth covering him. I quickly grabbed him and run through the door before the entire place caught fire. Recalling the moments, Member of Parliament for South St. Catherine Fitzroy Jackson described the situation as unfortunate. There will be an assessment of what available space is there for this place residence. This is what I will have to pursue with the municipality and the Ministry of Local Government. The fact that they didn't want to stay in the neighborhood, which is quite normal, make this discussion even more urgent, Jackson stated. A producer who recently came to attention in the music fraternity for producing songs recorded by Confessors Con Chaserval, dancer DJ Jashi, was taken out by police last evening in Grandspen in St. Andrew. Police reports are that the 28-year-old producer from Gully in Grandspen was taken out during a confrontation. The police say a 45 semi-automatic pistol along with three 45 rounds were seized following the producer's death. The producer who is known as Taddy Activity, Geo and Padman has not yet been formally identified by the police. The producer re re recently coordinated the production of one of Josh's song, Cream of the Crap. The producer is a main player in the active music production group following that Producers demand several people flock to his Instagram account to express condolences. 
the Indicom Commissioner of Investigation, Indicom, is probing the fatal shooting of the producer. 